All right, let us play some games with this new version of the MindLink deck that I just finished a deck tech on. If you started watching with this video, uh, go to the previous video. Um, I spent a lot of time and effort explaining the deck um, <clears throat> and, um, and talking about how the deck has evolved from our original version to the current version, which I think is actually a pretty good version. So let's see if we can do a uh, better than what we did last time, which was a one and five record. This hand looks great. Uh, I need a lot of um, blue mana, bl uh, blue power, but um, I think it's good enough to keep, especially because we have a turn one initiates the sands. We can hit three power by turn three, by turn two, which is great. Um, we can't play the mind link until we get another blue, but um, sometimes you just have to hope that your deck uh, draws well. So we have it, so any power that we draw next turn is going to allow us to play Morrison's Disciple, which we do. So this is great. Um, let's make a three three uh, overwhelm here, uh, where it looks like we're playing against Armory. So we just want to put as much power onto the board as we can, and and uh, he's going to be forced to torch this this turn or use a sort of a Karya on it, um, and. Um, I'm actually more than happy to permafrost this, so I can go in for an extra point of damage. I I don't want to use the Echoing Form at the moment because my opponent has a very grindy deck. I really want to take advantage of the Unstable Form and Mind Link combo to draw more cards. Oh no, this is not a... Oh, actually, I forgot to take out the Diplomatic Seals. I don't think this is the right card in this deck. Um, so let's just go ahead and smash him for 6. What are the odds that I put unstable form onto this and it becomes a better uh, unit? Because right now we are wasting too many turns not playing the mind link. So I think it's worth probably. Well, either way, let's use the unstable form onto the four drop here next turn. Um, maybe we should have used it before the attack because chances are the five drop, five power unit is going to have more power. I mean, more attack than the two two. So let's just go ahead and use it this turn. Oh, never mind. Now. Now we can get some advantage out of this. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, let's just... So the question now is, do I want to use this onto my 4-drop and hope that it becomes a better 5-mana unit? Or do I just want to use this unstable form on here again and draw another card? I think the answer is I'm going to want to draw another card. Okay, I have no cows, but it does have revenge, which is pretty good against a grindy deck like this one. Okay, that is okay. Oh wait, I, <laughs> I gave him a card with revenge as well. Oh, that's kind of miserable. Um, let's hope he doesn't. <laughs> let's hope he doesn't draw it again anytime soon. Oh man. Yeah, maybe uh, I should have played the unstable form onto my own disciple two more turns ago, which will basically allow me to um, do more damage. But all right, uh, Acolyte is good. I will play the Acolyte over the other cards because we do want the extra land drop. And then we're going to play the Spire Guard without Spark, which I think is fine. We just want to put more threats onto the table. Chances are this deck only can answer one threat at a time, especially if he wants to play another Auric Hammer or if he wants to play um, any, or a harsh rule for that matter. I don't, I don't care if he harsh rules. But putting more threats onto the, onto the board, I think is good. Not always good against Armory, but I think in this situation, it is good. Okay, so yeah, so he can hammer, but I will get to kill his hammer in the following, following turn. And, and we, we wouldn't have been able to do this if we only played one thread. Okay. Um, I'm going to start by playing the Temple Scribe. I want to give myself the most options. I don't know what I'll draw, but I want to see it first. Okay, we'll swing in for two. And uh, let's play this. This... <laughs> no. That also means I can't attack with either of my uh, smaller units now. Um, 
Maybe I can. I can still attack with the Acolyte. I'll just finish it off with the Yeti Pult um, if he blocks. Okay, so he now has a 6-4 Hammer. That's kind of problematic. Um, so let's just smash him with these two units and see if he blocks here. I mean, there's no reason why he wouldn't block. Even if I have a removal spell, it's still in his best interest to block, right? I don't think... I don't think you should be afraid of a, a removal spell at this point. Yeah, you can block either unit, that's fine. Um, so he has a very large hammer in his hand. I don't want to run my Cerso out there just to get hammered down for no reason. Um, his hammer has four, uh, four defense. So if I play the Yeti Pult, he kills the Yeti Pult. I don't actually have enough power on board to finish his hammer on the following turn. So unfortunately for us, we're going to have to play Cerso as a sacrificial lamb. So what's going to happen here is he's going to put a, the Auric Hammer into play, kill our Cerso. We'll be able to attack it down to one armor, and then we can finish it off with Yeti Pult here. Which is too bad, because we're losing Cerso for nothing here. Well, it's not for nothing. I traded Cerso for his Reforge effectively. Okay, the good thing about Yeti Pult here is even if I don't draw a power next turn, I can activate it and draw three cards, and I think that will be enough to win me this game. But if I draw a power, I can Shimmer Pack, and that will definitely win me the game. Yeah, so if I draw any, oh, um, maybe not enough anymore. I can only do eight damage. He has 10 life. Okay, that's cool. Give me a power. Well, that's not good. Okay, at this point, I don't think I need to play the Cercel and have it open to a harsh rule because on the falling turn, I do get to kill him, barring anything very strange. Because even if he plays a weapon and kills my 3-3, I think I still kill him next turn. Yeah, that was uh, that was debatable. You know, was playing Cercel the, the, the correct play? Or not, I don't know. Okay, that gave us the win. We are already doing better than our first time around. We start off with a 1-0, which I'm very happy about. The, when I was um, tweaking the deck and, and making different versions of this deck, I, I thought really hard about whether we should focus more on the Elysian mid-range portion of the deck, or should we um, switch gears and focus more on the combo piece part of the deck, um, in which case we take out a lot of the units and start adding in defensive control cards and, and focus more on making the combo work. Um, and I finally decided to go heavier on the Elysian version of the deck because I really like the idea that your deck can do something um, even if you don't draw the mind link. Whereas if you went for the more controlling, more control, sorry, more combo focused version of the deck, and and if you don't draw your um, mind link, then your deck's doing nothing. And that's the part that I really don't like. It's actually one of the reasons why I really don't like having 75 card decks. Um, having 75 card decks increases draw related variants and makes it more difficult to play combo decks. Okay. So we'll play Temple Scribe here and draw a card. Um, perfect, we draw our Mind Link, which we can play next turn. We even have three, tr actually, we have four copies of cards that can transform things. So we're off to a very good start. We do have to draw more power though. Because if we get stuck in three power, that would be most unfortunate. Yeah, there we go. Problem solved. Okay, we'll play Mind Link first. Um, because this deck is built on Mind Link, we can play the Amber Acolyte next turn, get a power, and then play the uh, Unstable Form. I, I guess, now that I think about it, I could have gone Amber Acolyte, next turn play mind link and then play in a stable form which will put an extra 2-1 body on the board so that was my mistake i basically threw away two damage 
Hmm, next time I'll know. Play and learn, play and learn. Yeah, definitely should have played the Amber Acolyte first. I missed two. If I lose this game because of two life, I would be kicking myself. Oh, okay, Chalice. Reasonable. Um, we'll start with the uh, Temple Scribe. I just, I always want to start with a card that gives us more options. So the question here now is, do I play Unstable Form into this twice, making a five drop, or do I wait? I think against. I actually don't know. I don't have enough experience with Chalice. Am I the grindier deck or is he the grindier deck? And if we do both go into a long game grind, can I win? I don't know the answer to these questions. So we can we can learn a lot from this game. Because if if I was the grindier deck, then what I would do is I would save the unstable forms and play it onto his units so I can draw more cards to grind. But if I, he's the grindier deck then i think i should play the unstable form into my units and hopefully get oh i can't reign of frogs him that's kind of annoying all right and i'm stuck on power which is also really annoying um okay so we're gonna use the yeti pole actually he's sitting on a okay so my opponent is definitely sitting on a harsh rule and is waiting for me to expand my board because he doesn't want to harsh rule any of these units. So if I give him Yeti Pull, he's going to harsh rule. But the question is, is it worth that? If Is it worth getting this harsh rule away if I can Reign of Frogs him? <laughs> you know what? Let's just do it. So he's going to harsh rule away and use up his entire turn. And on my following turn, I can Reign of Frogs him and hopefully knock out all the good cards in his hand and win the game. We'll see. Oh no, he doesn't have harsh rule. He's in a lot of trouble. Okay, we're going to... <laughs> I could really use a power though. Um, let's Rain of Frogs him first. So he's got Channel the Tempest, Scribe, another Archive Creator, Wisdom of the Elders. I'm gonna take one of the. I'm gonna take, I think, either the Channel the Tempest or the Archive cur uh, Curator here. And I think I'll take the Channel the Tempest. Um, it's one of the cards that can actually kill me uh, without doing combat, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, so let's just grab that. Oh, perfect! I got a land. Um, in this case, we will smash him for a lot of damage, and. At this point, I'm not too concerned about echoing forming this, but okay. So because we've been stuck on power for so long, we want to maximize our power use. So I think here we would either use it on our four one or we should use it on his three six. Let's use it on our four one because, okay. The reason I did this is because we're power screwed and by using it onto his unit, it turns it into a five drop. That also means it'll take up my entire turn next turn. So I will use the Echoing Form onto this unit if I want to attack him. And I think I do want to attack him. So I'll use the Echoing Form or maybe even the uh, Polymorph next turn. Yeah, if I use the Polymorph on this next turn, I can swing in the air for three damage. Ha, <laughs> he drew a... Okay, in that case, I don't need to use Echoing Form. Um. So if I play Yeti Pole, I can get rid of two blockers. And if I um, permafrost this, I think he just dies. So let's just do that. Yep, and that is lethal. <laughs> exactly enough. All right. All right. 2-0 against a very good deck, no less. I think Chalice is one of the best decks. And he, uh, and he, and if we didn't put Yeti Pot into our deck, we wouldn't have won that game. Well, at least not at that point in time. We might have grinded him out later on, but it would have been a lot more difficult. But we did get pretty lucky, though, that we get to play the Yeti Pot into his open 5 power, and he didn't, and he did not have the harsh rule. Because if he had the harsh rule, then it's going to be a different game.
Those uh, random 1-1s one and 2-1s I have in play ended up doing a lot of damage throughout the game. Okay, I'm going to end the video here and record the next game separately.